and it'll fit. Here we go. Yeah, kind of, maybe. Better. That should work. Can you hear me okay? Good? Cool. Awesome. So, welcome back to another exciting EMP. So, if you navigate your way to the fall 2018 announcement, so you look for the CS199 EMP, what do you want to see October 11th? You'll find the link to the slides here. One of my friends thought that this was my blog and this was a blog post, which I thought was kind of funny. I just blog about EMP every week. So anyways, you should be taken to some slides that look like this. Got it. Okay, cool. So first off, that survey that I was talking about last week, thank you guys so much for all of your feedback. Um, I'm going to keep it open for a little longer. I'll probably give you until next week to fill it out. Um, just a quick word of clarification. Uh, you don't have to be enrolled to take the survey. In fact, you're still encouraged to do so. Um, if you are enrolled, you're expected to. That's part of your attendance and participation. Um, and if you think of any other feedback, um, I believe I give you the ability to um, go back and edit your responses. So feel free if you thought of a response to something that you didn't think of before to go back and edit. But after next week, I'm going to close that off. But you can still take it here. A little link over there. Questions or comments about survey? Awesome. So your weekly links for giving feedback. So we have an anonymous feedback form just for EMP right there. And we also have a topic suggestion form, also anonymous, that you can find here, or song suggestions. So I appreciate those as well. I feel like this desk has shifted slightly from like last week, but that could just be me. But I guess these slides are closer now. Okay, so what did we do last week? So just even more object stuff. And this week, um, I'm mostly just going to be hitting on all of the wacky stuff with polymorphism and all the weird stuff you could do because of inheritance. So this week's slides, um, the review will probably end up being a little bit shorter. I wanted to give you as much time as possible for MP3. But I've liked how the dynamic has been going the past couple weeks where you guys ask uh, stuff that you want to see me do with the examples. So anytime that you want to see what happens if you do something, shout it out. I always get so excited about that. Um, but anyways, here we go. So lecture review. So again, just... A quick refresher on inheritance. So child classes are derived from the parent classes. So you'll see it in the context of class subclass extends base class. And then we have stuff like the super constructor. So we can access the parent's constructor and we do this in the child's constructor. And then protected access within the class or any of its descendants. So breaking down the public, private versus protected. So again, Public, anyone can access. Private, access only within the class. So as soon as you switch to a different file, you no longer have access, direct access to those. Protected, so access within the class or any of its descendants. It could be the same package or could be any package. I know that we haven't talked about packages yet, so it's a little confusing that we keep saying that without going over it. So hopefully just like, a quick surface level explanation. So the package example is if you remember when we imported scanner, that would be from the package java.util. So we would go java.util.scanner to use the scanner part of the Java utils. So basically if something's protected in there and we're using it, um, there's actually a thing called 
package private, it does exist. So if you're working outside of the package, then um, you won't actually have access to those. So if you think about like maybe with the past two uh, Pokemon labs that you've had, so when you extended the Pokemon class to practice inheritance where you had the different types of Pokemon, you would still want to have protected access within the main Pokemon class so that your extended sub Pokemon um, would be able to access those. But if you were going to give your Pokemon class or package to a friend or something, and maybe you didn't want them to modify what was going on within your Pokemon package, that's where you would run into the issues with protected because if your friend was using your Pokemon package and was trying to access something that you're just, you thought that you were protecting within the package, you would want to use package private. So that's a high level explanation on where protected comes in in terms of packages. It'll probably start to click a bit more once we actually talk about packages, but any questions there? All righty. So polymorphism. I apologize, I have trouble saying this word, so it's, we'll be in the struggle together. But, um, so this is one of the rare times where I don't particularly like how Wikipedia starts explaining stuff. Um, I think that the text is quite dense on um, saying the provision of a single interface to the entities of different types. If that doesn't make sense, I'm with you. I mean, it took me a while to like fully make sense of the Wikipedia's definition, but we're here to break it down. So basically the two types of polymorphism that we're gonna focus on is the subtype polymorphism. So that's where a single method can act on all descendants of a given class. So this would be like objects to string. And again, Wikipedia, a lot of the times I'll refer to you to the Wikipedia page. This one I would say proceed with caution, but it could help. Um, and then method overloading. So a method can behave differently depending on its arguments. So this means parameters, not return types. Um, any high level questions on polymorphism before we jump into the two different types? Okay. doke. So first off, method overloading. So a method can behave differently depending on its arguments. So it's, again, it says arguments, so this means parameters, not return types. So we can have stuff like int add with int x and int y versus int add versus int x, int y, and int z. We can see that we have the same name for add over there, but we have a different amount of parameters. So Java, the way that it's going to break it down is it's going to see the add and it's going to see three int parameters or two int parameters and be able to tell which one is which. And then we can also do things as long as they're different types of parameters. So in the second one, um, we have add with int x and int y versus int add versus with int x and double y. So again, that's cool too, because we have different types of parameters in our list. So we can have two definitions for add, and when Java sees add with an int and an int, or add with an int and a double, it's going to be able to differentiate which one is going on. Now, things that we can't do is float int add, or float add with int x and int y versus int add int x and int y. And the reason for this is because it's going to, Java is going to see the add with two ints and it's going to be like, I don't know which one you want me to use because it doesn't, it's not going to know the return type automatically. So whenever, you, if you were to try to define this twice, it's going to be saying that there are multiple definitions for it because the parameter list is the same. And another thing that you think that you might be sneaky about on the int add with int x and int y versus 
int add with int y and int x. So these are just names. Java doesn't care what you name things. It's still going to see the same types. So we wouldn't be able to do this even if we switch the names around. We still need different types. So it's a lot of text being spewed at you right now. So we'll jump over to example. So expand some of these out. So again, so some of the ones that we've seen before, and I commented out some of them. So we can see that when we have different um, amounts of parameters or different types of parameters in here, Java is OK. But if we go between this public int add and then add in this public int add, we're instantly going to get the red squiggly line to death because add int int is already defined in example. It's the class that we're referring to. And we have two int adds going on, and Java isn't going to know the difference between the two, even if they're the exact same definition. And then building off of that, so similarly, when we have a float return type versus an int return type, it doesn't even get into the fact that we're returning x plus y here. We see that it clashes with another um, method that it's referring to down here. And it's already defined an example. So questions there on what you can and cannot do when it comes to methods of the same name. Clarify a little bit. All right. So moving on. I like Zinx cats. A lot of them. A lot of people find them ugly, but I think they're cute. But if not, this will be a very weird example to help you guys remember better. So subtype polymorphism, the other type of polymorphism that we're going to focus on. So basically, a single method can act on all descendants of a given class. So we could think of objects to string. Um, again, Wikipedia is a little dense, but might help. And then. So the, re the reasoning or what we mean by uh, the subtype polymorphism is that all objects we define are objects, right? And then you're like, yes, Leah, objects are objects. That you're saying the same thing. So what I mean is the capital O objects. So animals are objects. Cats are animals. Animals are objects. Sphinxes are cats. Cats are animals, animals are objects. So anything that um, we can do the further down over here when it comes to defining what type of object things are and how it inherits or extends, we can go ahead and do. So what I mean by that is if we remember the class subclass extends base class, so Last week, we saw some stuff with animals about animals make sound. So we can use this by the cat type, because cat is an animal. If we have a cat and can create a cat, we know how to create an animal since it, it extends off of cat. And so because cat is an animal, it inherits everything animal has. And then cats meow, so if we just wanted to make the animal meow and we had a sphinx, we could use the cat's meow um, with a Sphinx object as well. Questions there? So if we had a method for Sphinxes because Sphinxes get cold because they don't have any fur, so if we wanted to put a sweater 
on our little sphinx, but we had a cat object. This wouldn't work. You can't put all cats in sweaters if you've ever tried. It goes very poorly. But because cat isn't a dis descendant of sphinx, it's an ancestor. So since a single method can act on all descendants and a cat is not a descendant of sphinx, we would have issues with this. Yeah? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll segue into my example. I suck at segueing, so thank you for like setting that up for me. So, jump along here so at least that you guys can see the source code real quick. This is some of the stuff that we were doing last week. Uh, we can make noise where if we don't define anything other than animal um, or make noise, it'll just go ahead and print out I'm an animal. Cat extends off of this where we can meow and make noise by meowing. And then Sphinx, it just extends cat. It's not too exciting besides put sweater on, but spoilers for later. So. We can have a cat class here, or de declare an instance of a cat class creating a kitty cat object. And we can have several different ways on passing in a cat and still getting results. So over here, we have public static string, my own to string method, where I just add on this object string is a, and then object to string. And then similarly with animal and cat. So whenever we actually execute this, I'll go ahead and comment out spoilers for later. So I have some system outs, but the object string is cat at, and then this is the little hash memory thing. So the reason why we can do this is because implicitly all, all classes that we, we create, so whenever we have this cat class that extends animal, there's an implicit, so animal being the highest of the immediate hierarchy that we've actually defined here, there's an implicit extends object here. So everything, um, just like how Java has a lot of defaults, the default whenever you create a class is it extends object. Object is something that Java created in order for you guys to define your own types that aren't primitive types. So this will go along with kind of the upcasting, downcasting that I'll cover with a bit later. But since animals extend objects and cats extend animals and so on and so forth, whenever we have anything to do with objects with any of the classes that we create, we can pass it in as an object. So this might become a little bit more clear as we go on to upcasting and downcasting, but does that kind of make sense on why we can pass in and like to an, um, a function that takes in an object, whatever cat or animal or whatever else, since everything comes down from immediately that we can't see the object is the overshadowing that all of the objects that we define um, descend from. So again, just as how we can do it from object, we can do it with animal string, since cat is an animal and cat is an object. And if we wanted to do, here, we'll, we'll jump ahead a little bit. So it's actually gonna have an issue right here since you can't apply the sphinx to it, but we can actually cast it 
and we'll get into why this is going to go disastrously later. So we'll touch on that in a second. Any other questions there or anything else that you wanted to see in the example? Yeah. Um, on a light? Sure. I don't know where the light switch is. Is that better? Better? We could do like a thumbs up, thumbs down thing. Yes. Or like a hand shaking in the middle. All right. So if there are no more questions there, touching on upcasting and downcasting might help with um, understanding subtype polymorphism. So basically what's going on is um, with upcasting, we can cast to a supertype. So parent, grandparent, class, whatever. So this is cool as far as Java is concerned. And Java actually will upcast objects automatically if we were trying to use a child class in place of a base class. So this is kind of what's going on with the subtype polymorphism, where it will automatically upcast the cat type up to an object. And similarly, with cat up to an animal or animal up to an object, Java knows how to do that. So in a cheesy example, the way that I kind of remember it is that it's a child upcasting to an adult, so like a little child in adult's clothing, or like if you've seen the cartoons with like two children stacked on top of each other to make a really tall adult. So what we have right here is that we can have a parent class, not too exciting, child class that extends parent, and if a child wants to go to a bar, that should just be a child. And we have a little child named Timmy who wants to go to a bar where we have a bouncer that only validates parents. Oh, this is testing the wrong thing. Yeah. We could print out, this is awesome. So if you're 18 and you want to go to a bar, just program it. Cheesy example. Um, questions on that one? All right, so downcasting. I don't know if you guys watch iCarly, but I remember this one scene where, like, the grown-up in it put his head into, like, a little, like, baby outfit, and it was kind of disturbing trying to find this image, so please appreciate it. <laughs> so basically, we can cast to a subtype as well. Um, Example would be if we were trying to do animal my animal is equal to new cat, and then cat is equal to my cast a cat, and cast is cat my animal. So this isn't always cool with Java. So what we saw before and what I'll demo again is that we can have um, a class cast exception. So in this case, you wouldn't be able to order off a kid's menu if we're going along with my cheesy examples. <laughs> But sometimes it's actually really useful. So um, I have a little bit of code here for my pets example. If you wanted to try it out, this assumes that you um, defined everything else. But so which one was that? There we go. So again, if we're trying to cast a normal cat into a sphinx, We're going to get a class cast exception that cat cannot be classified to a sphinx. But this is where downcasting is kind of cool. So over here, I have a lot of things that extended animals. So cat, as we know before, extended animal. Corn, because we're in Illinois, so corn can be an animal now because it's going to be a pet. 
We can have cows, nothing too exciting. And then we can have a wolf. And then I define my own make noise that a wolf is not corn, it is a wolf. So going back to tests. So let's say I have all these animals over here. So let's say I have, what, five pets over here? So I have a cow called Music, a cow called Calculus, a cat named Mr. Buns, a corn named Corny, and a wolf named Moon Moon. So I want to group them all together because these are all my pets. So these are all different types of animals. So I can just declare an animal array and go ahead and put all of my pets into this animal array, regardless on the type that it is. And since before that we saw with animals, all animals make noise. So here, it doesn't even matter what type the animal is, because all animals have a make noise. So it's not going to care whenever I'm accessing an animal from the array, if it's a cow, cat, corn, or wolf. They all make noise. It helps if you comment out the thing that makes a runtime error happen. <coughs> so I left in the new animal created, but over here, we can see that Java knew exactly what to do. Um, so if there was a cat version of make noise, the hierarchical resolution is going to allow us to figure out that a cat was using the make noise and say meow. And then since I didn't actually define a special make noise for cows, it just defaults to the animals make noise, I am an animal. And then corn says I am corn. A wolf says, I am not corn, I am a wolf. And then finally, we have another cow that says, I am an animal. So this is some of the, like, one of the reasons why you might actually um, be able or want to uh, downcast. So over here, if you make a cow, cat, corn, wolf, and animal class, you could try this out yourself. But yeah, if all things are defined, then you'll be able to do this and I'll be able to determine which make noise if it comes from, even if we're referring to an animal array, to go down to what sound a cat makes. So any questions there? Oh, so can they access other siblings? So can a cat access like a cow's member variables? No, that's a good question. Um, there's, at least in Java, I, there might be a language that actually you're able to, but there's no direct access to sibling classes. Any other questions? That was a good question. All right, so if there are no more questions there, I just kind of want to take, um, just give you guys extra time to work on your MPs. But um, I'm going to s try to start uh, putting together some practice homework. So they're not like real homeworks, not for a grade or anything, but it's just more practice that um, I write myself. So it might give you like a different perspective than some of the stuff that Jeff writes. So if you're wanting even more practice. Um, so I've done some, some um, for empirical uh, or imperative programming. Um, 
And I'm also going to try to have the solutions readily available. Um, I believe for all the imperative stuff, I have solutions for those as well. But definitely try it on your own. And if you need help, I just want the solutions there so you could go ahead and look ahead. Um, but yeah, so I'll try to have those at the end of every slide set and just build up a bigger and bigger list. Um, any questions overall? Okay. Life's good? Mia? No complaints? Small complaints? Small complaints are okay. Well, Anyways, I'll turn it over to you guys for what you guys want to do for the rest of the time. Um, I'll just be hanging out here if you want even more practice on anything that we've seen up to this point, or even if you're trying to work on your own projects and you're looking ahead at some other stuff, I enjoy seeing what you guys are doing. And I know you guys probably don't have ample amount of time to take on other projects, but if you are, I'm also interested in that. But yeah, the rest of the time is yours. So thank you. <laughs>